Welcome to this video by MM Midlife. Uh, recently, we had a very tragic news of a 25 year old uh, kickboxer from Ecuador passing away after taking a blow during a national championship bout in Ecuador. Uh, apparently, uh, there were no ringside physicians and uh, the fighter sustained brain injury. And once he reached the hospital, they couldn't do much to save him and was declared dead shortly thereafter. So first let's watch the video of the event, how things occurred, break it down where he could have gotten injured and then maybe discuss the medical aspects of what could have been done to prevent this thing or maybe in case the situation repeats, how uh, the authorities should act to not lose another young fighter. So let's first watch the video. Our fighter is in the blue headgear. That's where he gets the head kick. Immediately goes down. But grabs the back of his head. The ref's not able to assess that he's uh, out. And is completely unconscious with a very loose and flaccid body. And I'm going to tell you why that's important. The ref does a good job here of removing uh, the mouth guard because that's what obstructs his airway. That's not how they should have turned him over, especially if there's a risk of neck injury. Okay, there are some staff around, but uh, none of them seems to be uh, the ringside physician. So uh, I'm not sure what are they assessing or they're trying to do. So they take a lot of time in understanding that uh, this is not a typical concussion and the guy needs to be escorted to the hospital ASAP. I think this goes on for about a uh, minute, minute and a half and uh, perhaps after that he's taken to the hospital which I don't know how far was it. Okay, so let's first understand the difference between a regular concussion and what happened in this case to this young guy joel uh, a regular concussion we have seen plenty of knockouts by now to understand how a regular concussion looks uh, the fighter goes down immediately and gets stiffened up most often they do a fencing response wherein one arm is extended the other arm is flexed and even with the legs you can see some kind of posturing so you see their body is stiff and they might make some sounds or you know they are grunting in pain and about seven to eight seconds later you might see them flicker or move and it may take some time for them to recover about a uh, few seconds or sometimes up to a minute but they get back to their consciousness slowly in this case the major difference was that he went completely limp okay so that's the red flag number one the second thing that uh, if there was a ringside physician he should have come in and assess was to check his pupils. If his pupils are bilaterally reactive, both they dilate when you uh, throw the torchlight and constrict when you take it off uh, and both are equally reactive, that's a small ominous sign. But if that does not happen, you have to understand that there might be some injury to the brain. Uh, in this case, I don't think uh, the uh, staff had any idea what they were looking for. They were just hoping uh, that he'd recover after some seconds. Uh, the ref did a good thing of uh, removing his mouth guard because uh, when a fighter or any person goes unconscious, his own mouth or his own tongue can fall back and obstruct his own airway and can uh, you know suffocate and make things worse. So. Uh, and even after that, uh, they turned him quite haphazardly. In case there is a neck injury, which often happens in a concussion, concussion or in a traumatic brain injury, they should first uh, support the neck. One of them should support the neck and one of the sh uh, them should support the shoulder and ro log roll the person carefully. Uh, in this scenario, what happened was, uh, the fighter himself is wearing a headgear and his opponent is wearing a shin guard yet uh, ideally 
it should have been enough to absorb the forces to not have led to something as devastating as this episode uh, but perhaps uh, the fighter would have been dealing with some existing brain injury maybe there could be an aneurysm in his brain that could have ruptured uh, we have no idea about the medical history but uh, as per the news he was immediately taken to the nearest hospital where he was put on a ventilator now somebody's put on a ventilator when his uh, lungs or respiratory system isn't functioning so now it can be because of pathology in the lung or it can be because of depressed respiratory center in the brain which most likely happened in this case uh, because of the concussive blow uh, he started bleeding in his own brain that it's called an intracerebral bleed and that blood starts pushing on the brain parenchyma so as that tissue gets compressed uh, it adds pressure to the brain stem and in this case uh, it would have acted within minutes so let's look at some part of the anatomy here the brain stem is comprising of the midbrain the pons and the medulla now they have numerous important functions but if we just focus on the most vital function it's breathing that is your respiration and your heart rate so the cardiac system so the cardiac drive and the respiratory drive uh, is initiated by this center in the midbrain if this part is dead uh, it's quite uh, self explanatory that uh, the respiratory system or the cardiac system won't function even if the lungs and heart are well functioning so in this case uh, he was put on a ventilator uh, but instead of that perhaps what was required was an immediate neurosurgery wherein there are few ways of uh, decompressing the swelling on the skull there are procedures which are uh, which is known as craniectomy wherein a piece of the uh, cranium or the skull is removed so as to let the pressure out and to remove the clot or to suck out the excess bleeding uh, there is another uh, procedure like a burr hole craniotomy wherein you just drill a small hole into the skull to let the pressure out and to suck out the excess uh, uh, blood which is uh, press uh, adding pressure over the brain tissue uh, perhaps they would not have had those resources there and uh, this life could not be saved i hope the authorities and other organizations take a lesson out of this thing always have a ringside physician with a uh, right medical equipment and who should uh, be aware of all the protocol of what to do in case of such an emergency have a very quick transit to the nearest emergency facility have tie ups with those hospitals so that uh, such cases are handled on emergency basis perhaps give some uh, crash course to the referees or the other staff members so that they are able to understand the difference between a normal knockout worth versus something uh, as dangerous as it happened in this scenario uh it's a very tragic news may his uh, soul rest in peace uh, i hope you like this video breakdown if you liked it please do press the like button comment if you got any other suggestions for me to make a video on uh subscribe if you haven't already and uh, hopefully uh none of uh, such events are ever repeated again thank you